U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this area and others interested in having American agriculture receive cost of production plus a reasonable profit. The American farmers and ranchers are building a brighter future for agriculture through the National Farmers Organization, the organization that awoke America and represents the leadership of agriculture. U.S. Farm Report features NFO and the new face of the processing industry with Gene Potter, NFO Meat Commodity Director, and Dick Fout, Assistant to the Director of the Meat Commodity Department. Doing the questioning is Phil Allen, Farm News Commentator. Ordinarily, livestock market reports are mentioned on noon hour programs on radio and television, and they play to a specific audience and in newspapers that are carried on one of the inside pages, and they're read, I suppose, by people who plan to market during that week. But livestock prices have been making front page news all during the past winter and on into the spring month. And for a very interesting reason, the price has remained higher than most of the experts were predicting it would, considering the fact that there's a larger supply. Uh, just by way of verification of this, I'd like to cite uh, an item which appeared in one of the big circulation Middle Western newspapers, the Des Moines Register, a science story by Don Mum, the farm editor, and he called attention to this phenomenon this way. He said the cattle market hit a six and a half year high. Now this was dated about mid-March. The prime steers in the 1200 to 1350 pound class sold for $32.75 and 75 cents to 33.50 a hundred weight, and the price uh, paid the highest for steers in Chicago since 1962. And as Mr. Potter and Mr. Fowd are going to mention in just a moment, uh, since this uh, hit the news, there's even been higher pricing on the Chicago market and others also on cattle. But we're also going to talk about hogs. But before we get to this point, let me underline this fact about the high prices. An Iowa State University agricultural economist, Gene Futrell, who is oftentimes quoted, noted that the slaughter of cattle at federally inspected packing plants for the first 10 weeks of 1969 was up 8% over uh, that same period a year earlier. In other words, we're getting a bigger supply in cattle. Now, he also mentions the supply in, in hogs. Hog slaughter at federally inspected plants was up 10% and sheep up 5%. So there you have it, 8% more on cattle, 10% more on hogs and 5% more on sheep, and yet the prices are so high that it's causing comment. This comment by Futrell, Iowa State University economist, basically it's hard to believe that we can use as much beef, pork, and poultry as we are currently consuming and still have the prices we have for cattle and hogs. And then he made this little comment which amused me, the cattle market has been helped by good marketing patterns by the producers. Uh, Gene Potter, they hit $35 just this past week. That's higher than this $32.50. Uh, what effect did the NFO have on this? Well, Phil, I'm uh, sure that uh, we would like to sit here and take credit for every bit of it. And I think that we could substantiate this. But it is difficult for anyone to say in an economic condition uh, what exactly the circumstances would be if NFO wasn't involved. But those who have watched livestock marketing, those who are aware of what's going on uh, in the marketing of livestock, know that NFO is the big factor in the prices that we have today. And it's, it's a very simple matter, really. Uh, producers in the past have always had the attitude, well, there's nothing that can be done about it. But there are a lot of intelligent, forward-thinking producers who are now a part of the National Farmers Organization that feel there is something that can be done about prices and they are doing something about prices. So we can talk about all of the economic uh, factors involved, but it's basically a very simple matter that producers themselves use the production that they have and use that production and work towards a price with which they can live and continue in business, which is something we haven't had in the past. I would like to demonstrate this for a moment as to actually what has happened with the price of hogs. Now, you, we've talked about the price of cattle. 
uh, momentarily here. And I have with me a graph which shows two things. Number one, on the top here, this graph is in relation to the price that we have had for hogs country markets in Interior, Iowa, and of course, which is indicative of the general price level all over. The lower graph, you will see the supply. And this is for a period beginning of January of 1961 and up to the present, both on supply and price. I would like to draw your attention to several things here. Number one, you see right here, NFO and an arrow drawn to this point, which is the second week in February <clears throat> of 1965, when NFO first became active in a large volume of marketing of hogs in this particular area. You will see that the price levels up to that time varied along a line, which was approximately $16 per hundredweight. And then after NFO's involvement, it has varied along a line which is approximately $20 per hundredweight. $4 above what it was prior to the time that NFO became involved. Again, if you will look at the supply, and we always consider, or we've always been told in agriculture before, that price is directly related to supply, and that when the supply goes up, the price has to go down, and when the uh, supply goes down, well, the price goes up. Well, we can see here that the supply remained consistent through this total period. Although there was variations, it varied along a line which is in the neighborhood of 400,000 per week. Now, and if actually if we studied this in detail, you would find that since NFO has become involved, we have had on the average a little higher level of production than we had prior to that time which should have tended to make the price lower, not higher. Yet, we see a price which has been extremely higher than it was prior to the time that NFO became involved. We feel that NFO certainly has had a terrific effect in this. And in fact, you will notice the low peaks in supply, or the low valleys, excuse me, in price, are as high as the peaks were prior to the time that NFO was involved. So I think we have here, Phil, a real uh, factual statement of, uh, of what the effects have been and what has happened since uh, who NFO drew up has this chart, involved. Gene? Uh, are these figures NFO figures, or are these uh, official? <clears throat> these figures are figures uh, from the uh, Consumer Marketing Service, the Department of Agriculture, uh, Washington, D.C., that compile these figures. These are a USDA market and volume figure reports. Well, that tells quite a remarkable story. In other words, you, you ju jumped the general level of prices since the NFO involvement. I'd like to turn to uh, Dick Follett, who came along. He's special assistant to the director of the Meat Commodity Department. In other words, he's Gene Potter's right-hand man. Worked in the Meat Commodity Department for six years, been in farming and livestock all his life. Dick Follett is from Greenfield, Ohio. Uh, Dick. Why don't you tell us a little more in detail about the progress that the NFO is making under these contracts? Well, I have a map here with a shaded area showing the uh, areas that we do have contracts which our members are working under today. These contracts were started uh, basically in the 68, August of 68. And with this, you've seen a general upward price pressure on livestock. Now to uh, bear these figures or this map out and the figures and the illustration that Gene's just given you here, here is a reprint from the Western Livestock Journal uh, as of December 12, 1968, which stated that the subst substantiates the strength of the livestock market this fall is due solely to the efforts of the National Farmers Organization. So bearing this in mind, you will see that this shaded area is over your heavier livestock producing area and primarily your hog producing area of the United States. And with this, we feel and we know that we've had a tremendous effect on the price with our contracts and our pricing formula contracts, which in a lot of cases is day ahead pricing and tends to take the uh, tremendous 
low pressure out of your pricing. I know that farmers generally are familiar with the facts that are indicated on the shaded area of that map, Dick, but uh, do you mean that the shaded area on the map of the United States is an area where livestock is moving under contract with NFO farmers? This entire area here is the area that we do have contracts that our members are moving livestock under contract out of. Now, the title of this program, U.S. Farm Reports, on this particular issue is the new face of the processor. I've had conversations with Gene Potter about this, and he, he's describing, I think, a, a fact that many livestock men are aware of. The packing industry is changing, isn't it, Gene? Yes, Phil, and uh, the last five to six years that I have uh, been involved in the meat department uh, with NFO, We've seen a terrific change in attitude, in personnel, and in fact in ownership in the livestock processing industry. And this is causing the industry to take a different look at the business. It's causing the industry to think about and do things that they never did before, and it's actually giving them the capabilities to do some of these things. And these are important to producers, so I would like to spend some time in elaborating on this. We've seen a, the major pro a lot of the major processing companies uh, be uh, bought out, uh, acquired by large conglomerates or holding companies, which many of us of active producers hear very little about or know, or know very little about. With a terrific financial background, uh, people who have not been involved in the processing industry before, but do have a good business sense as to what needs to be done. Now, this isn't something that's just happened. In the past, the retailer, as we've talked in this organization for a long while, have been the ones who have had a great deal to do with extremely low livestock prices. And there's been a way that this been, has been accomplished and it's important in this overall picture. If you will think for a moment about a, a large retailer <clears throat> that retails a major percentage of all the red meat in the country buying from a packer. And for all practical purposes, these people dictate a price to the packer. Now, in the past, when the retailer decided that it was time for the market to be somewhat lower, he would pass this price on to the retailer, or on to the packer. And then when the packer went out the next day to buy his livestock, he would lower the market to the producer, and thus the lower markets that we've all lived under for the last 20 years. Then NFO came along and started to organizing producers to cause some resistance, to block this passing of a lower price onto producers, so that the packer then could no longer indiscriminately pass a lower price on for hogs or cattle, lambs, whatever the situation might be. The packer found himself in a bind. The pressure from the end of the retailer and now a pressure from the producer which has caused the packing industry over the last few years to be extreme, an extremely low profit industry and which has made them vulnerable for acquisitions. So this is something over the total picture that NFO certainly has had an effect in. Now, as these people who are now coming into the processing industry, they don't intend to continue operating this industry at the low profit level that it is. They know that there have to be some changes made. And the two major areas where these changes need to be made are in the a stable source of supply and a stable outlet at stabilized price levels. And this is exactly what NFO has been talking about for the last 10 years. And this is why there's been a terrific change in the industry and why the industry is thinking the same way that the National Farmers Organization is uh, for a large percentage of them now. I'd like to spend a little bit of time in discussing this stable source of supply. The packer has three major areas from which this stable source of supply can be procured. Number one, he can get it from organized producers. Number two, he can get it through individual contracts with individual producers which fall into the category that we normally consider or talk about as vertical integration, and in fact by the owning and controlling of that production himself. 
Now, these are the three areas that the packing industry can go to get and secure a stable source of supply. Now, I would like to discuss these in a little more detail, one at a time, and to begin with, organized producers, of which we know that NFO is the largest group of organized producers and certainly the most effective. Now, if a packer can get a stable supply through the NFO, he is going to deal with the NFO because this is the easiest, it's the most beneficial to him, and of course, the most beneficial to producers because through this type of a mechanism, the producer himself has something to say about the price he's selling for and the conditions under which he's selling. The second area, as we mentioned before, where this stable source of supply can be secured is through individual contracts with producers. And if the processing industry cannot secure from organized producers, they're going to look at one of the other two and to see what actually uh, this would do as far as we as family type individual producers are concerned. We all are familiar with the history of the broiler industry and what happened when we started to contracting as individuals with large companies or with companies uh, as an individual to produce for them. We know that as an individual, we're not in a position to bargain with equal strength with the large packer or with anyone else who is issuing such a type of contract. And because of this, when we bargain as an individual, we don't have sufficient strength to negotiate a, an agreement with equitable terms. And because of this, then over a period of time, the producer's position continues to de deteriorate. He really hasn't solved any problem. He solved a problem for the packer, but he hasn't solved one for himself, and he will continue in relatively the same position that he has been in in the past. And the third area that we mentioned was the fact that the processing industry would own the production themselves. Now, I'm sure that many of the major processors in this country are not necessarily interested in owning their own production because it is expensive. There's management problems. But they do have the ability now to do it. The companies that are acquiring the processing industry have the financial background and the financial ability to actually own and control a terrifically large percentage of everything that they kill. And this is an alternative they didn't have before. The other people who were in the processing industry, for the most part, didn't have this financial backing. So it does give the new people an, an alternative, which they didn't have before, and an extremely dangerous alternative as far as we as uh, individual producers are concerned. Because once the processing industry takes control of the producing of that production, there's certainly not going to be a place for small or not even small, but independent type production. So uh, in the total picture, there is a different face to the industry. They are doing things and thinking about things that they haven't before. And this is beneficial to producers. It's the greatest opportunity that we as organized producers and the National Farmers Organization has ever had. But it's an opportunity we must capitalize on now. Because if, as producers, we don't, the industry will go the other direction to get this stable source of supply. And once going that direction, of course, there's no future left for an independent producer. The new face of the processor. Supposing now we talk, uh, well, gentlemen, Mr. Fout, Dick Fout, and Gene Potter, supposing you discuss for this radio and television audience the benefits that farmers might derive from the marketing arrangements with the NFO. You've shown now charts showing that it brought about a higher level. You've shown a good geographical distribution. Now, what does it mean to the farmer? <clears throat> well, I think one thing, Phil, is uh, honest weight. Uh, our people, uh, if it's hogs going through a collection point, a collection point operator is paid so much per hundred weight for the use of his facilities, which he has no reason to uh, underweigh the livestock. Uh, we do know that there is a lot of livestock that is underweight. I might give you a, an example of one of the larger packers that I talked to recently. One of his buyers was telling of hogs out of their own buying stations from there to their plant that on a 40,000 pound load only lost 385 pounds. Well, 
Uh, this is less than 1% uh, shrink on them, and it is something that is unheard of if you do have honest weights on both ends. Well, Dick, I'd like to add a little something to this. Uh, uh, what you say is certainly true. And there's one thing that amazed me when I first became involved in livestock marketing to at this level, other than just hauling my hogs to the local market. And this was when you started talking about buyers or stock, started talking to buyers of major companies, one of the first things they ask you, well, what are the weighing conditions? How are you weighing the production? Uh, it's not the price that they're paying, it's how they're weighed. And uh, uh, for anyone who becomes involved in this, the total country buying structure we have is based upon unfair practices and primarily short weights. The financial return to a country hog buyer is low enough that he could not make a living if the only thing that he got was the commission he's paid. He has to have something else, and it has forced uh, many people in this field uh, and a large percentage of all the livestock that's bought in the country is actually paid for on weights that are less than what the actual weight is. And well, I know we did a, a program on the subject of NFO collection points. How is it done when the farmer brings his livestock into an NFO collection point? Well, Phil, uh, when a farmer brings his livestock into an NFO collection point, of course there is a weighmaster there. Uh, that is experienced, but the producer has the right to weigh his own production if he would like. Uh, the packer pays on the same weight that the farmer is paid on. There's no reweighing of production. If a member brings uh, 125 hogs in and they weigh so much, that stamp scale ticket is the same scale ticket that the packer pays on. The man who runs this operation is paid by the member so much per hundred weight for the use of his facilities. So the member himself sells the livestock direct to the packer. There's no man in between that has to make a living. And, of course, in the livestock industry, this is we've had a lot of people along the way that, that handled the livestock in the past before it finally ended up to the packer. And through our organization, the producer sells directly to the packer, the most efficient way that you can sell. I notice there's a note here that talks about an insured check. Uh, there have been instances in the news, haven't there, uh, gentlemen, about uh, packers. I know there have been a, a lot of new packers come into the business and some not very well financed. Uh, supposing a packer goes broke, does... Uh, the NFO farmer have his check insured? Yes, Phil. Uh, our organization has available to our people a insurance policy which does insure checks, their livestock checks, from the packers where their livestock does go. Now, this is the first in the industry. It gives the farmer more protection financially in the movement of his livestock than he's ever had in the past. This is something that most producers don't worry about until they lose a check or their neighbors lost a check. Uh, and, uh, of course, we had a big one here in Iowa about three years ago, and there was just another independent dealer in eastern Iowa a couple of months ago that uh, 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 defra defaulted in the payment for livestock, and he, he was a small independent uh, with only three or four yards, and it amounted to something in excess of a quarter of a million dollars that producers lost because of this. And uh, uh, all members participating in our marketing program where livestock is sold to insured plants are covered for 100% of that check. And we feel this is a service and is something that, regardless of what we think about bonds, that uh, there is no other place that you can sell uh, with a major marketing group to have the same protection that our members have. When the NFO first had this program of insured checks, uh, it was discussed, I noticed, in the press. A number of feature articles were written about it. It's something like group insurance, isn't it, that the NFO has well, made available? It's a policy that uh, we maintain as an organization and our members who market under this program and participate in uh, the program as such that we have are automatically covered when they're selling to an insured plant. Uh, Dick, we've, uh, we've talked about a lot of the things that, uh, as far as uh, our program is concerned, and I think one thing that many people don't consider or think about is the fact that there are experienced personnel uh, at the collection points, at plants where our people uh, deliver livestock. Would you like to discuss that for a moment? Yes, we do have at, at our collection points uh, 
our own NFO representative, which are experienced people in the livestock field. They are aware of the problems of the industry and the farmer too, and therefore they give the, give the farmer the representation that he needs in the movement of his livestock, and still giving the packing industry the fair weights and other fair practices that go with a uh, contractual arrangement. Uh, we also have a similar situation in the cattle plants where we move grade and yield cattle. Uh, we have a representative there that does represent our members, uh, gives them honest weights. Uh, as far as any other pertaining to the movement of their cattle into the plants of booking them in, and this type of thing, our people are there to represent them, and they are experienced people in the field of livestock. Not we, only check the weights, of course, but the grades, and to see that the packer himself uh, does uh, handle the cattle uh, as they should be to the benefit of the producer, and if the producer ever has any questions or would like to see his cattle, of course, he always has someone there who is working for him, his employee, that can help him with this. I've heard a good deal said that uh, there's an upward price pressure because of these NFO marketing arrangements. The fact that NFO farmers are marketing where farmers have decided what direction the volume of livestock will go, that this causes an upward price pressure. Will you gentlemen explain that? Well, Bill, I'll try, but uh, we don't have another three hours, so I think right. we'll have to be a little bit brief uh, in regard to this. but. It's, again, as I said when we opened, there's basically a very simple, uh, the, the basics behind it is very simple. It's a matter of a large number of producers with cattle, hogs, lambs, and all other types of grain and livestock to sell that are working together to, uh, uh, as a group and applying their pressure to raise prices, as opposed to in the past, the only pressure that was applied was by the industry to lower prices. Some of the ways that this can be done, and I think a very simple thing that anyone familiar with our program would see, that the buyers in the country, uh, those who oppose our efforts, want to do one thing. They want to try to make NFO look bad, and there's one way to do it. Keep raising the market and try to keep their market higher than ours. Well, our market is based on an escalating principle so that uh, as the general market level goes up, ours escalates also. So when a buyer out here, we have a collection point at one place and five down, miles down the road, a uh, company has a buying station and we have a price there, he tries to beat it. When he tries to beat it, the general market level goes up because other people are doing the same thing. As the general market level goes up, our price raises also, and as a result, you have an upward pressure on the market. There's many other things like day ahead pricing, which from an economic standpoint, are involved in this, and at some later date, we would like to discuss it further from that standpoint. Well, it's just part of the common sense of doing a producing for a price and so on. We have maybe a few seconds to talk about the general attitude of the industry. Uh, have you noticed, as NFO has succeeded in blocking bigger and bigger production together, that the industry has an attitude about this? Well, uh, yes, uh, Phil. There used to be old cliches about things that could never be done about uh, packers would never talk, and if they talked, they'd never sign a contract. Well, we all know that they have talked, they've signed contracts. Our position to renegotiate for new contracts is much improved. So there's an overall terrific improvement in attitude at this point, Phil. And that for today is something to think about. U.S. Farm Report has presented NFO and the new face of the processing industry with Gene Potter, NFO Meat Commodity Director, and Dick Fout assistant to the director of the Meat Commodity Department. Doing the questioning was Phil Allen, Farm News Commentator. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week at this same time for more facts on agriculture and rural America, which is the gear wheel of our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The farm income pattern sets the nation's true prosperity level, and the National Farmers Organization represents new thinking in a new generation of agricultural producers. A brighter day for American agriculture.